For $200, this thing has everything you need. Almost. So today I have the 5.5 inch newer touchscreen monitor. And with features like it being a full touchscreen, the ability to upload custom LUTs, you have false color, zebra, and a histogram, and don't forget, it's also touchscreen, for under $200, I think that's pretty interesting. Now, I will say one of the limitations of this screen is that you can't record externally. So for some cameras, you can record at a higher quality or higher bit rate or something like that. But if you record through a monitor like this, you can't record externally or record on here. But let me tell you how I think this is best used. If I have a camera like this, the a7 III, or any camera that doesn't have a flip screen, for example, for the longest time, we used to buy things like a mirror to stick on the back of our a7 III so that when we were vlogging, it kind of sits like this so that when you're vlogging and you're holding the camera like this, or even if we're just doing like a talking head like this, we used to put this mirror on the camera so that we could see a reflection in it, so that you could actually see if you were in frame, if you were exposed properly, anything like that. This is a really cheap fix, but it does have a lot of limitations. You can see if you're in focus, especially if you're far away from it, and it's really hard to see the details, like your histogram or your audio levels or anything like that when you're using something like this. So for talking heads or anything like this, this monitor is absolutely perfect. I mean, maybe not for vlogging, it's gonna be a little bit too big, but like I said, for this, thumbs up. Now, if you have a camera that does have a flip screen, do you really need a monitor? Well, for $200, I think you should consider it. I think it could really solve some problems for you. The first is that if you're like me and you're shooting talking headshots like this, like on our a7 III, which I'm shooting on right now, it has a flip screen on the side over here. It's really tempting for me to look at the screen over here and not at the camera. Even if it's up above, it's out of the way enough that I don't catch myself looking up there and it's really obvious for me to move my head. So I always find if I have this on, I can move it to the side or move it above and not make this big jump up here so that I can really connect with the audience by looking right into the lens. Okay, so I just want to show you what my YouTube setup usually looks like using this uh, monitor over here. So take a look. So there we go. As you can see, there's the monitor up here. There's me. Hi. And there's there's you. You can see you on the camera up there. I got my uh, teleprompter right here, which I did a video on a couple months ago. So I'll link that here too. But yeah, on this screen here, I'm actually filming on log. So when I'm sitting here looking at myself, I can actually film myself and see what it's going to look like after the footage is at least color graded so that I uh, have that just like little bit of extra assurance that I'm exposed properly because filming and log is really tough. So at least if you have the monitor and you can see that, it, it should give you that little bit of extra assurance, especially if you're on like a paid commercial shoot or something like that, should really help. However, I do know that not everybody is a YouTuber and they're not gonna be filming themselves like this. So is this good for any professional shoot? Well, I think it kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you're gonna be using this out on a hot sunny day, and if you wanna record externally, then I would recommend spending a little bit extra money or a lot of extra money on a really high-end monitor and external recorder. However, this does come with a sun hood, so if you are outside, it is fairly usable, even in direct sunlight but it's just not gonna be the brightest screen out there, which is understandable, especially for the price. But if you are looking for a monitor to have that little bit of extra assurance that your shot is gonna be in focus, your white balance and exposure is gonna be correct, and you just wanna get a better look at what you're filming by essentially just blowing up your back of your LCD screen here, then this is definitely gonna help you nail that shot. I'd even recommend spending the $200 just on the shoot, just to be able to review the footage with your client rather than having them look at this little teeny tiny LCD screen that never looks good. Sometimes just little things like that can be worth its weight in gold. And depending on your shoot, your client, sometimes it's even in your best interest just to get a monitor like this, just to like beef up your rig a little bit and maybe have a handle on here so that when you show up to the shoot, you have a bigger rig. I know it's a little bit ridiculous, but for some reason, some clients really think that having a bigger rig looks more professional, it looks more expensive, and they're getting more value out of it. Even further than that, and what I see as one of the big benefits of having this screen, is that for most of my clients, I'm probably filming in a log or a flat picture profile so that I can get the best quality out of my camera. And when they're looking over my shoulder, they're gonna see a really flat and unflattering picture profile because it just looks so dull. So when they're looking at this, they could be thinking, oh, this is what I'm gonna get delivered. However, what you can do with this is insert the little USB stick here, and then you can upload your log conversion LUTs or even your own custom LUTs. 
so that when your client's looking over your shoulder, they can see more accurately what the end product might look like. So when they're looking over your shoulder, they can go, wow, that looks really good rather than, oh my God, there's like no color and there's no contrast or anything. This monitor can also be powered off of the DC outlet here or off of Sony batteries on the back. So however, those batteries can get pretty pricey. So I just have the newer ones here to even match the newer brand and they work really good and I would recommend. I'm not even sure what these batteries are called, but I'll be sure to link them in the description below along with this monitor here. I'm actually not even sure how long these batteries last. Honestly, I've never had them die in a shoot. And if I need to, I bought the two pack of these batteries so that I can always have a backup. Finally, just to go over the cons of this. So if you're making the decision, I don't wanna be hyping this up too much. Some of the cons of this monitor, like I said earlier, is that you can't record externally. But in this price range, I don't really think you're gonna find a monitor with that capability anyway. The second would be the brightness. This thing is great indoors and it's perfectly fine in the shade. And in the sun with the sun hood on, it is definitely usable and it will be better than your other LCD screen on your camera, but it's not gonna outperform like an $800 plus external monitor like the Ninja 5 or anything like that. The other con I have about this is the build quality. Now this is like an entry level or a budget monitor and it kind of feels that way. The entire thing feels like it's made of plastic. There might be a little bit of metal here and there, but even the screen here feels very plastic. It doesn't feel like a high quality glass or anything. In fact, just in full disclosure, Newer did send me one of these to review, and the first one they sent was actually broken. The screen had cracked, so when I plugged it in, there's a big crack through it and everything, and the image on it really wasn't that usable, and I'm assuming that it didn't even survive the shipping on the way over here and that it broke on the way. But anyway, Newer was very good and they replaced it right away with no questions asked. They were very good about it that way. But if you're gonna be taking this outside on shoots, I would recommend getting a cover for it or something so it doesn't get too banged out in your bag because like I said, it is very fragile. So in summary, if you're looking for your first field monitor, this is definitely a safe bet and you will not be disappointed, especially in this price range. I mean, for less than $200, you can't really go wrong. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about this monitor, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. It actually helps us out. And if you want to see any more gear reviews or any of our weekly vlogs, be sure to hit that subscribe button so we can see you next week. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.